welcome, welcome. This is Oswald Peters with Big O, evaluating food for diabetics. Today, the food I'm going to be evaluating is a lentil soup. Lentil pea soup for diabetes. Now, lentil pea is a really highly rated pea for diabetics. It's a good pea. It's low on the glycemic index. And here's my lentil pea. The focus point is going to be this baby here. So I soak this lentil pea overnight so it'd be easy to cook. And I also got to wash off. I, wash, I rinse it off to get rid of all the, um, the coloring that's on the skin of the dry lentil pea. Because I use dry lentil peas. I don't use any peas in Canada, you know. If you watch my videos, you know I don't do that. So today, the focus on lentil peas. How do I make lentil peas healthy for diabetics? Right? And as you know, I have learned... Is not what you eat, but how you combine them to eat. Even cooking combination is important. Because I don't want to limit myself not eating certain things because it's not good for diabetes. But how I eat them is my focus. So for this lentil peas, I'm going to spend some time and show you how I'm going to do a special lentil peas just for diabetes. All right? So here I have the lentil peas. I'm going to cook, uh, cook the soup with some um, rib bone. These are bones. Seasoned with my Overnight, my herbs, my special grind herbs. And it's already seasoned last night, so it's ready to go. I have some, this is my, um, my seasoning here. My onions, my tomatoes, my peppers, my garlics, and so on. Everything is here. A little piece of ginger, that is here. That's here. And um, here I have my um, sweet potato, pumpkin. I have some cassava or yucca and some yams right under here, right? And here I have some greens. I have four greens here. I have kale, spinach, cut greens, and a sort of a cabbage. Now, he's putting greens in his soup. Here's the deal. These food, these here will go in the soup coming to the end because they cook pretty fast. But all the four things here, the pumpkin doesn't have a lot of carbohydrates and it's very nutritious. The sweet potato is very good, but has a lot higher carb. The cassava is very good, but has a lot of carbs. So I know putting these in a pot is going to create a very high carb pot and, you know, carbs are sugars, right? And that's not going to be so good with this combination. So by adding the vegetables, it will give me the option when I take a bowl of food to take more vegetables, more lentil, piece of meat, and just control the portions of these when I put in my plate. You see? So I'll take, I can take a plate of soup with just one piece of yam, a couple of pieces of pumpkin, a couple of pieces of sweet potato. And then put, take more kale, more, more, more greens. Right? So as a diabetic, you can't cook like everybody else sometimes. Right? No, normally, most people wouldn't put that in their, in their lentil soup. But then what happens to them is they end up with a whole bunch of carbs they eat. They didn't get the variety. So food is food. You can create your own food. And that's what I do. I create my own combination of food. So putting this in here makes my lentil, give me an option to eat my lentil and skip some of these carbs when I'm eating. You see? And then other members of my family who's eating, could eat, who don't have, who have diabetes, they get the full, they could eat the carb, they want to eat the carb. See? So I can still enjoy a normal meal by improvising and making that meat healthy for diabetes. See? So that's my thing. So now let's go and learn. How I'm going to start this cooking is it? All is going to the pot eventually. But I'm going to start with putting in my meat. Now I have my water boiling here already. And it's kicking. And this meat is going to take a while, a little bit to cook. Right? So this meat is going to take a little time to cook. So I put enough water so this meat can really boil and cook really good and really soft. This bone. Right? I let about half the water dry out before I add anything else. You see the seasoning already floating to the top there. This is well seasoned, right? I'm putting everything in the pot. And, right, so the meat is in, and this is going to stay there and boil. I'm going to boil it half, right? So it can be real cooked, because beef takes a little while to cook when you're boiling it like this. Okay? So the next thing I'm going to put in here is going to be my herbs, right? Because I don't use powder seasoning, and all my flavor is going to come from these. So in goes my herbs. And it's going to boil with that beef for maybe an hour, hour, an hour, however long it takes 
to get that beef soft. And I'm going to use all of this because this is my flavoring. I have peppers, onions, garlic, sweet pepper, and some of these peppers like these grow in my backyard in my garden. Drop that in there. These from my garden. Drop them in there. This is habanero pepper just for flavor. Hot too. I don't burst it. Don't let it expose it at all. The seeds they get exposed. And this is what I'm going to do. I'll let this baby boil. See? So with all that flavor I'm putting in there, I don't need, I would need a bunch of seasoning salts and stuff. All right, look at that. Look at that in there. All right? All that's flavor. When that boil and melt in that water, you can't even see any of this anymore. They all will disappear after I boil this and let it boil enough. And just put the flavor in the water and I'm going to boil half the water down to about half the pot. Before I put in the other ingredients, which cooks pretty fast, right? The lentil goes in. I'm going to cover this up. And when it's boiled, I'll load the stove down. So the lentil will go in next. When the meat is half cooked, about half cooked, I'm going to drop the lentil in there. Because I don't want to melt it into a paste. I drop the lentil in there. And when the lentil is almost cooked, I'm going to put in these provisions. They take 5-10 minutes to cook. And the last thing I'm going to do, for 2 minutes, I'm going to drop in the greens. Because I want the greens not to be melted. I want the greens to be whole and I can see them and take them out and eat them in my soup. Right? And all I'm going to use to season my food is a little salt. It's a special salt I use, a yellow, um, a pink salt I use, some black pepper. And I use this, this salt and black pepper here also. And that is it. That's it. To, what are you going to make my soup with? No other ingredients, all right? So this is going to take a little while. And I'm going to kind of go along, show you gradually as I progress. So right now, the meat is on the fire. And I got to give that... 45 minutes to, to hour to get where I would like it to be eating. Um, bone, beef bone had been boiling for a while now. So I wanted it to be tender, pretty tender before I put the beans, the peas in. So they're pretty good. See all that, all that herbs already blend in the water and you can see the bone, the meat coming off the bone. So they're pretty good now. So, and all the herbs are already almost melted. So pure flavor. At this time, I will check my flavor to see if I like it, if I need more salt or black pepper, because that's all I put in it. Mmm, it's really good. Really good. All the herbs melted in there, all the garlic and stuff, and the ginger is just perfect right now. So I don't need to put too much any more, any more salt right now. I'll try again later on. So right now, I'm going to put some of this um, lentil peas, which is the star of the soup. But I'm not going to use all this lentil piece too much. So I will use this several times. Okay. I think that should be enough in there. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, make this too thick. I want to crowd it up too much there with lentil piece. And um, put it a bit more. And I think that's good enough right there. I'll save this other lentil peas for another, another cook. See? So, lentil peas goes in here now. And I'm going to leave that to, to boil again for another 15 minutes or so. Give the lentil peas time to um, burst, melt a little bit. And then I add my other ingredients. So, yep, looking good. Got a lentil in there. See? It's nice in there. That's, that's enough in there. I want to be a soup. I don't want it to be thick to make it like a lentil pea side. It's a soup. I want it to be soupy like this. Yep. So I'll give us some more time again. Uh, my, make sure my temperature is good. Let that bad boy continue cooking. Then when I finish that, next the provision going in. So we're looking good so far. We're looking good. Smelling good and looking good. All right. All right, well now, this piece has been cooking for a while, about 15, 20 minutes, and it looks good to me. I don't want to overcook it to where it melts into a piece. I want the beans to be still solid like this. So this is good, see, this is good. Because you could leave it to melt to where they disappear, and we have a tick, tick, tick sauce here. So that's good. So now it's time for me to put in some of these, hey boy. I'm not gonna put all of them because I don't want too much in there, because I'm going to use it for another time also. 
But I'm gonna put some pumpkins in there, some sweet potatoes, some of the yam, some of the cassava. Put some of, and that would take about 10 minutes for that to be good. But I'm gonna save some of this for another cook. You know? I think that's I think that's enough in there right now. I think that's enough in there. Cause I'll leave, yeah. Oh that's way plenty here. That's plenty carbs, plenty in there. So you wanna make a soup where it's tasty and you have enough provision to eat, but not too much carbs at the same time, so you wanna eat all of this, right? I'm just gonna do I'm gonna cook this with something else later on. At a later date. For now, that's good enough in there. That's enough for that in there. And this will go again for another, eh, this should be 10 minutes or so, this should be ready to go. And then I will put, um, then I'll put my greens in there. So get out 10 minutes for that for this provision to start to, to cook. Okay? We're really going good, we're going good. We're looking really, really good. Really good. I raised up a little bit to give that a little time to start to kick up. All right, yes. All right, so. That provision had been there in like five minutes. And these things don't take too long to cook. I mean, they, I don't want them to melt. Once they hold it chunky and nice. Look at that. Look how nice and chunky, all the, all the pumpkin there. I don't want to melt my pumpkin this time in this. Right, I want to eat them whole. So that's good to go. Now I'm gonna put in some of my greens. Not all of it. Just some, I mean, just enough to allow me. And like I said, I have four greens here. I have cabbage, kale, spinach, um, colored greens, so there's four of them in here, so I put that. They're going to melt in there real quick, in about two minutes, just to give me that extra um, nutrients I need, and that choice as I eat my soup. So I think that's good enough right here. I'll give that two minutes and I'm done, time to eat, the rest of it will be stored up for another time. Yeah, so this is good. Now this is unusual, but like I explained, essential to make this meal nice and healthy. And they're gonna get soft and melt in the air a little bit. And it'll be good. So I'll cover that back. Okay. So the rest of it, see like I do? I bag and everything. So I'm gonna bag this next for next time. Hey, I don't make a mess for my wife to clean up or have a as I as I cook, I clean as I go along. See? Everything is gone. As I use a dish, I wash it, put it in the dish, push it dishwasher to get cleaned up and everything is gone. So I keep my place clean as I cook, okay? Learn that from me. Anyway, we're almost done. All right, so give that two, two or three minutes to boil up and I'll tear it off and get ready to eat, okay? All right, it's been two minutes and it's boiled up and I'm done. So yes, I just needed it to boil up. I don't want the green anything has to melt. See? Nice and liquid. Because lentil peas could make a paste when you boil it too much. You know? That'd be just a lentil side dish. I don't want to do that. So there's a soup and you see the greens in it right there. The greens melt enough and everything is still nice and whole. Pumpkin doesn't melt or anything. So this is what I want. Right? So time to eat. So I'll close I'll turn my stove off. I don't have to test anymore. I know it's good. It smells so good. Turn my stove off and I'm gonna get my plate my bowl and we're gonna get ready to eat all right so i'm gonna before i eat i'm gonna check my blood sugar and see where i'm at before i could eat because i don't eat if my blood sugar is above 100 i don't eat anything right so i'll be under 100 but i've been fasting since i had breakfast really around 10 o'clock today so it's been a while since i eat any snacks or eat anything so i know my blood sugar is gonna be pretty pretty good or even lower than i expected okay but i'm feeling good i was just cooking i enjoyed my feeling good and i was okay keeping my fat burning. All right, so let me get my plate and get ready to start putting my meal together for eating. Okay, so I already took up my plate. Now look at my plate. See, I'm able to have all the greens here to eat and I'm able to take one piece of yam, one piece of cassava, a couple pieces of pumpkin. So I don't have too much carbs in this plate. But I got my soup and I got my meat. You see, so I'm able to, I'm able to put together my combination nicely and my peas melted in my, my sauce to so have the, all the flavor of the lentil. So this is a healthy lentil meal, soup, healthy lentil soup. And I'm sure it should work out for diabetes. 
but I wouldn't know until I test it after, okay? But um, because it's the first time I'm putting the, the greens, I just get an idea, how can I make my, my piece healthy and eat it? And I get this idea, put the greens in it. So if I don't put greens in here, my plate will look real scanty. And I feel like I'm eating like all the soup and no, nothing in it. But the greens full up the plate, and then I can add a couple of the carbs in here and the meat and enjoy my soup and, and keep my fiber high also, all right? So before I eat, I always test my blood sugar. I don't eat my sugar above 100. So all day I've been maintaining under 100 because what I ate this morning it wasn't gonna, didn't spike me at all. And I hadn't been snacking any un, unusually sweet stuff. So uh, my blood sugar is right now tested is at 74, right? 74 is a bit low to start with. I don't like usually go that low, but that's because I didn't have anything to eat at all today that was high in sugar. My breakfast was zero sugar in my breakfast. So nothing gave me any sugar today. So my body been burning its own sugar all day today. So I know my weight either losing or maintaining weight, but I should have eaten something to keep me up to about 80, 84, 85. But I didn't, but it's okay, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling fine, I don't know it was this low. But it's not low, because it's not under 70, okay? It should be above 70, but I like 80. Anyway, so now I'm gonna, now I know I can eat as much of this as I want to, because I'm pretty low. And I'll see how this turned out after hour and a half. So if this was a good lentil soup. Because I've ate lentil soup before, but the mistake I make, I put dumplings and lots of provision and stuff. And after I eat the food, my sugar was too high after, so I said, I'm not eating any more lentil soup like that. But I thought about it and I said, I could do it. I just need to combine it properly. And that's why I came up with this. But I leave out the dumplings because I know for a fact the dumplings are going to have a real high impact on the carbs, you know? I already have the cassava and the potatoes and stuff in here. That's just too much carbs. If I was doing dumpling, I have dumpling by itself. Dumpling and lentil only, not with all this other stuff. All right? So time to eat. And I can tell you, this thing smells good. And all the fresh herbs and stuff, tastes so beautiful. Man, I wish I could cook for you guys. So beautiful, no lie. You don't need nothing else. It tastes so beautiful. And you can taste the food, you can taste the lentil. If I put a bunch of different seasoning, it would taste the seasoning sauce. But here you're tasting the actual food. Everything, you can taste every piece of food individually, what it tastes like, all right? So this is the way you should be eating. Mmm. The pumpkin didn't melt, see? If I boil it too much, it melts. Everything is whole. Nothing is melted. Look at the pumpkin. Nothing is melted. Everything is just stay whole. I didn't overcook anything. And the meat is tender. The meat is cooked long. It's real nice and tender. Okay. So, it's this bone with some meat on it, but it's nice and tender. So, everything is good. Perfectly done. This is the ideal lentil soup for diabetes. But I will find out if it's perfect in an hour and a half. All right? So let me go and eat. Sit my wife here. She's going to eat a little bowl too. She don't eat as big a bowl as me. But that's all right. I'm a big guy. All right? And I'm hungry right now. So we can do this here. All right? So I'll be back to let you know how this worked out. Okay? Blessings. Okay. <laughs> it's time. To, it's been an hour and a half since I had that wonderful meal. Before I... I just took my blood test. See where I'm at after eating hour and a half. And before I give the numbers, I want to say something to the effect that I'm still full. Because the amount of fiber I get out of that food, and I know it's nutritious, because I check the nutritional value of everything in the plate. But there's a high amount of carbs in there. Right? I try to balance the carb off with the vegetable, with the greens, or the different greens. But there was still a lot of carb because the lentil peas have a great amount of carb. The cassava a great amount of carb. The yam has a great amount of carb. The pumpkin didn't have so much carb and the meat. But that's still a lot of carb combined together. So what I had to do, I, my, and I had a piece of everything, right? So it's a healthy meal. But is it, was it good for diabetics, diabetes? It was good in one sense that I'm still full. That means the fiber content that I made was really good. Would you want to do intermittent fasting? I know I can't. I don't have to eat nothing again until tomorrow. Right? 
so I know I can fast eight, nine hours with this meal because I'm so full after an hour and a half. So it's, a, it's good from that perspective. What about my blood sugar? Is it good for my blood sugar? Right? So here's my reading after an hour. 161. So 161 is not where I want to be. Um, the medical associations or the CDC and so on recommend to be under 180 after hour and a half, two hours of eating for diabetes, for diabetics, as a matter of fact. Non-diabetics usually be lower than that. But if you go back under 180 after hour and a half, two hours, they think you're okay as a diabetic. So in that, from that context, this food was evaluated okay to eat for diabetics. But with me, 140 is a target because that's where people without diabetes usually we are after an hour and a half. And that's where I want to be, and that's where I've been practicing. So this was not good for me and my goals. So what I will do with this, what I have to do with this food, I have more food there to eat, right? So I will eat it again tomorrow. When I eat it tomorrow, I will I will I, I wouldn't eat any of the uh, provision in there. I wouldn't eat any of the cassava or the sweet potatoes or anything. I'll just eat the greens, the lentil, piece of pumpkin and piece of meat. But I have enough greens in there to have a full plate of food. So it was a good idea to put the greens in that food so I could still eat the soup and maybe hit my proper range of 140. Okay. I may test it again and see just to prove that. But um, I'm not sure if I'll do it again, but I, I may. But that's what I will do. I will not eat any, any of the carbs except the carb in the lentil that's already lentil and what was sucked into the food from cooking the food together like that. You know, and I believe it's going to be lower. It could it under 140, I'm not sure. So my evaluation of this food is, it was a good meal. As a diabetic, you can have this meal, but you know that you have to control your portion. You can't eat as much. I had a big plate. I mean, I had a big, big bowl. You see my wife's plate, you see my plate. Mine was a big plate. So you can't eat a big portion like that. If you cut the portion back, eat more of the greens and the meat, and less of the, and the pumpkin, and less of the cassava, and the sweet potatoes, and so on, I think you'll be, I can hit my target doing that. So all in all, it's a good meal. Just have to make some adjustment on a meal like that to make it perfect. So I hope you enjoy that, because when you go out, you might eat a soup somewhere, and you have a good idea now the impact a soup could have on you. And just imagine if it didn't have natural ingredients, and it was a soup that you didn't know what to put in it, and it was made from different type of garlic powders and so on. It could be really, it could be really bad spiking. Because this soup has all natural ingredients and it still was a pretty high spike, you know? So, but it, it helps me to understand eating that type of food in the future. I hope it helps you understand the impact of a soup and controlling your portion and what to put in it. But add the, add the green to it. That was a really, it tastes really, really good. It was a really good addition. And you have the choice of eating that alone and no provision and still enjoy that soup. And that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. All right. So thank you very much. You know, subscribe, share the video, come back and see what I'm doing. Look at, look at my other videos. I'm up to close to 90 videos of evaluated food. I'm getting better. I'm trying to be more focused and I'm working and I keep working on that. It's a work in progress all the time. But check it out, you know. Anyway, blessings, blessings, blessings. And check out my other videos, okay?